Good afternoon, everybody. It's 1 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon and a beautiful day in San Francisco. And you're here to talk about observability at SNAP using tools and telemetry data for troubleshooting. Isn't that exciting? You know, troubleshooting is not exciting, but the fact that you are here is exciting. So welcome, welcome to Google Next 2023, and welcome to this session. So first off, let's start with a quick introduction. My name is Afrina, and I'm a product manager here at Google Cloud. Essentially, my role is to be the gap between you and the product. So over the years of working in cloud, I've spoken to many, many customers, right? I can put customers in three big buckets. Like number one, customers that are in the app modernization journey. Right? Here in tech, we call it modernization, meaning you're moving from your on-prem to a public cloud or a private cloud. Number two, you've moved to cloud, or you were born in cloud, now you're trying to figure out how do you sustain and scale. Number three, you've kind of done with number one and number two, and you've figured out how to scale. You've gone from millions of users, and you have a different set of problem to solve, but then from a troubleshooting and observability angle, you've kind of reached the plateau of productivity. So for today's session, we have invited one such customer that would fall into the third bucket. So as far as the agenda goes, we'll have Snap to talk about how do they start in Google Cloud, how did the journey look like, and they would also be giving us a sneak peek into how does day-to-day -day troubleshooting look at Snap. And then I'll be back on stage, and I'll talk about common pitfalls. What stops the rest of us from not being able to get there? What makes the journey complex and hard? And we'll talk about what are we doing here at Google Cloud to make it a lot more easier for you. Towards the end, I'll talk to you about what are we building next, and we'll go from there. So without any further ado, let's welcome Evan on the stage. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Evan. I'm a tech leader from Snap. I have been at Snap for almost uh, seven years now. Uh, for the last few years, I have been mostly focused on building our observability stacks. Uh, for the first section, I'll quickly talk about a little bit of history between Snap and uh, Google Cloud. Let's start with uh, a quick poll, three questions. First one, by a show of hands, who has heard about Snapchat before this talk? Wow, that's a lot, actually. It's much more than one. Second question, who actually used Snapchat? Maybe a few times. Well, that's decent. Third question, who may have kids or young siblings that also use Snapchat? Great, I see. Thank you. Right, oh, I guess most of us have already been familiar with uh, Snapchat, but what you might not uh, know is that Snap is actually turning 12 in two weeks. So this is very exciting for us. Uh, it has around 400 million daily active users as of uh, end of last quarter, and it still continues to grow. When Snap was initially launched, uh, its backend was built on top of a Google Cloud App Engine. It's a fully managed serverless application platform. It follows a monolithic architecture, meaning that all the services run in a single backend. It has been worked well. It's supporting the fast growth of Snapchat from zero user to 100 million data active users. It's been amazing. But as you can imagine, right, for a single gigantic cluster, as it grows bigger and bigger, many problems start surfacing, like big blast radius, is very low cost efficiency, and et cetera. Now, to solve those problems, Snap, over the last few years, has spent a lot of efforts trying to migrate over to a multi-cloud, multi-region microservices architectures. It works quite well. Now, with that, there's a new set of problems surfaces, because now we have like, thousands of services, right? How can we make sure each of the services are healthy? So we need a good observability solution for that. Now, that's my kind of job comes in. Uh, as tech leader for the team, I want to make sure we build a platform that can first improve reliability, second, improve developer productivity, and thirdly, improve cost efficiency. We have five principles. The like first one, user-centric. This might not be very obvious, for internal tools, right? But if you have internal tools that is very intuitive, very easy to use, it helps a lot with adoption. The second and third principle are kind of no-brainers here because to support like, thousands of engineers and thousands of services, 
you want to make sure your solution is highly scalable and also robust. First one, cost optimized. Right? You always want to pay a very close attention to your cost because it can easily explode, right? especially for our observability platforms. Lastly, multi-cloud. Given now most of our services are running in, uh, across different clouds, clouds, you always want to match to that. So here's a, a high-level architecture diagram. Maybe let's you know, spend a quick two or three seconds, uh, take a look. So this is a very straightforward diagram, right? But there's a few, there are the few key decisions we made behind the scenes. Like, first of all, we, create, we, we, we provide a unified set of tools for of services across different clouds so that we can provide a consistent troubleshooting experiences. Second thing is for metrics. And we have been evolving our metrics backend to a, a SaaS offering from Chronosphere, which supports the standard Prometheus format. With the Prometheus format, we are able to create a unified data sources. <coughs> Basically, for all the metrics, right? For metrics from within Snap services, or metrics from uh, cloud vendors, and also metrics from uh, third party softwares. Chronosphere also provides a very powerful control plane to help us take control of our quota and cost spending. We do also use cloud monitoring for some of our use cases. Externally, logging. Like cloud logging has been evolving a lot for the last few years. It added tons of new features and also uh, improved their performance. Uh, we have partnered with cloud logging um, very successfully trying to resolve some issues and we are happy to uh, still uh, use cloud logging as our uh, number one uh, choice for logging. Uh, number four, last one. All the tools we choose here can work at snap scale. Just give you some, some data here to get a, get a sense here. Like for Maddox, right, we ingest like billions of data points per minute. For logs, we ingest more than 1.5 petabytes of data each week. All right, for the next section, I'll quickly walk through two examples to showcase you how we do troubleshooting at Snapchat. So stories is one of our most liked features on Snapchat. Let's say suddenly the Snapchat is, is unable to load stories right, from the phone. As engineer who is on call for the stories team, what's a typical incident handling lifecycle looks like? Right? Let's say the on call's name is Stella. Stella will first receive alerts, and she acknowledges the alerts, she starts to troubleshooting, following some runbook. She first saw that there's a huge increase of 500 error status code for the API that handles story requests. This is mostly mean, right, there is backend internal server errors. But what exactly is error, right? What caused it? For that, Stella continued to investigate. She first checked the deployment and the configuration change histories, but I found nothing changed. Now this becomes more interesting. She wants to use logs to find more information. All right. So let, let's take a look, kind of a zoom in look. Let's see what's, what's on Stellar's screen, right? So, is this point of work? Yeah. On the left side, Stellar first uses the logs fields to try to narrow down to the logs to specifically to error logs from the storage services. There's also one thing may not be very obvious here, but logs field dynamically group, uh, group all the logs for each of those labels, this kind of system labels, and so it counts. So using that, just by quickly scanning through it, Stella can quickly tell, okay, whether this error is coming from a specific resource or not. Let's say for this case, it's not, let's continue. So for next, probably Stella wants to know, okay, now when exactly does the incident starts happening. When exactly does the first error uh, starts showing? That's this histogram at the top can helps because it shows the very clear trends which are based on the number of errors or number of logs for that period of time. So Stella can click on the first bar in there and it takes to show the first set of error logs. But sometimes this might still not working because 
There might be just too many duplicate logs. There's just too much noises. Right? How do we solve that problem? So Stella, look at the top of the results and see there is a highly similar entry feature in there. He clicked on the button trying to preview the suggestions. And if it makes sense, she just applied it, removed that duplicate logs, and then she maybe do this a few more times until she has some clear signals. So with those clear signals, right, she may be able to uh, root cause issues. But I guess really the root cause here is not really that important for this demo. Uh, but what's really important is that how can you go from there? What is, you know, how can you do better if this happens again? Right. You always want to do the follow-ups. Follow-ups such as maybe just adding a very specific matrix, right, for this, which can better capture these specific issues. You know, add it to your dashboard. Set up alarm, and also make sure you also update your run book. As a short summary, with all those nice features from cloud logging, Stata was able to resolve issue much faster. All right, let me show you uh, another example, which are kind of typical for platform owners. Let's say Sam is from our data processing team. She owns the ingestion pipeline, which ingesting data from, of course, a lot of different services through Google Cloud pops up. During a weekly review, Sam found out that, okay, suddenly the bandwidth spiked for one of the days. And who, who caused that, right? So you want to figure out that. Sam first checked the overall like, bandwidth traffic uh, metrics. He found the spike, and he can confirm the start and end time, but that's not enough. There is indeed actually a breakdown matrix, but there is a problem. Is that, that this matrix has around 300,000 cardinality. Now let me quickly pause here and take another poll. I, who has, again, by a show of hands, who has ever tried to load a matrix with this much cardinality? Well, at least there's a few, it's good. Now what happens? Right. Someone's smiling? <laughs> it's like someone's doing this. <laughs> Right, nothing happens, exactly. So the thing that for such cardinality, right, this probably might have become not, not right too because a lot of times the graph is very, it's maybe taking a very long time to load or just not load at all. Even though it's loaded, it may not be really, it's become super hard to interpret anything from the graphs, right? There's just too much noises. So we have to think differently. How do we address this problem, right? Let's try logs. This is very easy, right? You can easily add a one log line and contain the breakdown information, and it's just down right there. But also, there is one kind of a thing I want to call out here that you definitely don't want to log a line for each of the messages you processed. You always want to, you know, first do some local aggregations, and then you meet a log line in some sort of a reasonable frequencies. And they say, you know, one log line per pod or per minute, something like that. Because if you don't do that, the, those excessive logs can potentially impact your application performance, or you know, also uh, cost a ton of money as well. All right, now we have the logs. Time to do some analysis. Here it enters the kind of the latest tool, which is big, uh, big query powered from cloud logging. It's called log analytics. So it's very easy to enable, actually, uh, with no extra cost uh, under normal conditions. So at Snap, we have this enabled for all of our services. To do the analysis, right, you just need to do build the queries here. The query building experience is, is very much the same like uh, BigQuery if you have used it before. You can essentially just you know, keep iterating on it until you get the results you want. And for every time, you can also try to you know, show the result in the table format for here, uh, at, at the bottom here. Uh, one helpful tip here is that you may want to try use one of these uh, log, uh, large language model based tools to help you build the queries if you are not a SQL experts. It actually works. Another nice thing here is that for those aggregated data, you can actually source as a graph in here. Like we have been, we just recently started using this. Uh, it's been amazing. It has a similar dashboard experiences like uh, from um, cloud monitoring. Highly recommend to check it out. As another short summary here is like, with this powerful tools, right, from cloud logging, 
we can now actually solve some complex problems. In one place, you can turn this unstructured data into structured data and then into graphs, which is much easier to visualize. That concludes my two examples. Uh, hopefully, it's useful for you. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Arfrena to talk about some of the common troubleshooting pitfalls. Arfrena. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. You know, what really stood out with SNAP is it was an amazing presentation where they talked about their guiding principles, their architecture, and how they do troubleshooting, right? They're very agile, they're super fast. And, and a lot of us have been trying to essentially do the same thing, but we don't realize the pitfalls that we might fall into. Let's talk a little bit about the common pitfalls that we see in troubleshooting. But good observability is essential for effective troubleshooting. I mean, it goes without telling, but if you're closing a large number of tickets with root cause unknown as a resolution, that you know that your observability is not correct. Like, you're not collecting the right signal. You're not bringing them to the right place. So let's talk about it a little bit more. So what are the common pitfalls? The number one, and essentially the biggest pitfall that we see is fragmented solution. What this means is, if you're trying to DIY a lot of things, or you have too many solutions in your ecosystem, you have one underlying, let's say for example, you have one underlying logs database, right? Your DevOps team is using it to resolve issues in the local computer. You're exporting that logs, and your security team is now using another good-looking tool with different visualization to analyze the same logs. And now your business analyst team is taking the same logs and performing and creating different dashboards. You see, it's the same underneath data. Why do we need so many applications, right? The overhead of managing applications the overhead of trying to scale, which is number two here, and then trying to figure out how do you manage cost, which is number four. Like, ops is not cheap, it is expensive, and if you do not know how to control it, the cost can get skyrocketing. If I can throw a coin into my pocket, for every time a customer tells me that I do not know how to figure out my cost, I'll, I'll be a multimillionaire by now. I won't have to stand here, right? So, Fragmented solution will lead to number two, number three, and number four, right? You cannot figure out how to scale. That's going to be a bottleneck. Then, lack of cohesive experience. If you noticed, when Evan was showing how troubleshooting looks in Snap, they were able to go flawlessly from metrics into logs. So, when you're thinking about troubleshooting, it's essential that you, that you have signals that talk to each other you should be able to go from metrics to your logs, metrics to your traces, and then preserve that in-context experience. And if you don't have that, you're actually making it difficult for your engineers to work on troubleshooting. It's going to be very challenging. So, to summarize the common pitfalls that we see, fragmented solution, complexity to scale, lack of cohesive experience, and skyrocketing cost. Another thing to add here in cost is we cannot tell you how many petabytes of logs you're going to generate, right? But what we can tell you is if you generate this much, this is likely the amount that you're going to be paying. Predictability is important. And across industry, we don't have a standardized way to charge logs, metrics, or traces. We all have so many different ways, and I could probably write a book on how to figure out cost, right? It's that complex. Our recommendation is for you to pick a suite of tools, essentially in one ecosystem, and when you're doing that, think about this, right? Number one, operate at scale, right? Google went from zero to billion users on the same platform. Snap just went from zero to 400 million users on the same platform. So ops should never be a bottleneck. When you're trying to grow your business, you should know that ops should be able to scale, right? Number two, ability to meet your reliability target. Like, if you have a well-established principle, error budget, you know your SLO, then you should be able to meet your reliability targets. Number four is provide the versatility. What this means is you essentially have the same signals across your organization. So you should be able to bring in users to use that, right? It's just not your DevOps team. 
your SecOps team, your BizOps teams, so many different users should be able to make the best out of the same underlying data set. And that would save you considerably on cost and overhead, and you'd be able to reduce your toil. Number four, remove fragmentation. We just spoke about it. Number five is cost effective. Now, in Google Cloud, Google Cloud's cloud operation suite is our observability solution. And what this does is we have several tools within the ecosystem. So you're able to collect all your signals, metrics, logs, trace, audit logs from both GCP services and outside of GCP. So what does that mean? You have on-prem, hybrid cloud, structured logs, unstructured logs, metrics from other ecosystems. You can collect all of it and bring it into Google Cloud. And our goal is to give you the same experience regardless of where your data was born. If your data was born in GCP, yes, you'd have a higher experience, but if your data was not born in GCP, you still need to have the same experience. So within Google Cloud Operation Suite, we have cloud monitoring that collects time series metrics for 60 plus GCP services. It would allow you to measure SLO. You could create in-context dashboards across. Then we have cloud logging, which is the home for logs. You can centrally collect your organization's logs, route them to flexible locations where you want, uh, perform analysis. We saw several examples which even just shared with us. Then we also have cloud trace, alerting, and much more. So let's talk about troubleshooting in Google Cloud. What I want to do in this section is essentially highlight some of the features that will help you in your troubleshooting journey. So a typical troubleshooting journey is going to look like this, right? You're getting your alerts and notification. Then you want to go explore what's happening in your system. And then you're saying, OK, can I get to my root cause? Then you get to remediation, where at some point you get to auto-remediation. You don't want, you want to reduce your toil. So just mapping that to the product development about how we think here at Google, it's we want to help you do four important things. Number one, collect. Collect signals from everywhere, because observability and troubleshooting is a lot more faster thing to do if you have a single pane of glass. Number two, configure. That's what monitoring is for. You need to know what's happening in your ecosystem. Number three, detect. So when we are thinking about detecting, of course you can configure certain things, but hey, life always throws up with random, random new things, right? You cannot always predict things that's gonna happen. So we think about, okay, if you can detect the knowns, what can we do to help you detect the unknowns? Then lastly, troubleshoot and make it easier for you to get to the root cause. Now, what I'm gonna do is essentially group two sections into one. So I'm gonna first talk about features that you could use for collect and configure. Then I'll talk about features that you can use for detecting and troubleshooting. All right, so step one is collect bringing data into Google Cloud. So if your data is already in Google Cloud, well and good. But if it's not, the step, the first step in troubleshooting is centralizing your data collection, right? So step one is ops agent. So if I have to talk about ops agent, I'll just put it in two categories. It's automatic, comes pre-installed if you're in GKE or Cloud Run. You do not have to do anything. It's day zero observability. If you have GCE VMs, your virtual machines, then you would have to install your ops agents. It's our opinionated way to collect metrics, logs, and traces. Number two and number three would help you if you want to collect signals from your multi-cloud or on-prem environment. Number, number two is our open telemetry collector. We support that and we, and we enable you to use an open telemetry collector. Number three is bind plane observability. This is our third party vendor, and they can help you remotely manage all your configurations. So once you've collected all your signals, this is our number one recommendation when it comes to logs. We want you, I mean, we recommend that you collect your logs in a single bucket. Sorry. Like centrally, oops. So we want you to centrally collect your logs in one single bucket, and you can apply guardrails by managing access using something called log views. See here. So when you do this, you're essentially creating that single pane of glass that's going to make troubleshooting a lot more easier. 
And this is exactly what Snap just shared with us in the architecture, right? They were able to troubleshoot issues faster because all their logs is in one centralized location. This is going to make it easy, let's say you work for a financial services. Your security team is always going to ask you, hey, are you collecting all the logs? Are all your logs in one place? They're going to be always behind you. And centrally storing your logs is essentially the key to it. Then, you could configure something called an uptime check. What uptime check does is if you have a business critical application and before your users report that, hey, some, an application is down, we can configure it, we can ping it periodically to see if it responds to our HTTP, HTTPS, or TCP request, and let you know that, hey, your request is probably down somewhere. Then, configure alerts and notification. Of course, we all know about alerts, but I just wanted to highlight new features that you could add to your troubleshooting of stack. So you could forecast an alert. What this means is, let's say your CPU utilization is climbing up. And before some things become an actual fire drill, you want to get notified two or three days in advance, you could configure something called forecast alerts, and you will get notified. So, you know, there's a difference between a page and a ticket. This is where you can create a ticket. Right. Then you could configure a logs-based alert. Again, there are two ways you can alert, right? You could alert on a log, or you could alert on a metric. So when would you use a log-based alert? Let's say a very, very high priority security incident happened and you want to know immediately, right? If something happens once and if something shows up once in your logs database and you want to get alerted on it, logs-based alert is the best way to do it. Of course, we have logs-based metric. We have been using this for many years. Metric absence, our SecOps friends love this because if you're not collecting metrics from some place, how would you know? Like, if you configure an alert for metric absence, you would know that there's something is broken in your pipeline and you should go take a look at it. And Google Cloud Mobile is another easier application to have in your phone. And if you have a log space alert, the fastest way to find out if is by getting a notification on your phone. And I believe about 29, 30% of our users start acknowledging and troubleshooting from their phone because they have access to the console. Next. Through our GCP, you should be able to create an in-context dashboard. This creates that single pane of glass view that we were talking about. Right? When you create an in-context dashboard, you could pull in your metrics, logs, and traces all in one view for your team to look at. Now, they're not scrambling. They're not looking into 20 different windows to go find the same information. Everything is available in context in single pane. Next, cloud trace. When troubleshooting, gaining sufficient proof to support your hypothesis is critical. Cloud Trace new UI helps visualizing your request flows from distributed traces. It includes a more responsive and interactive detail section. Next, let's talk about detect and troubleshoot. So, error reporting is another amazing, amazing tool, and it comes in free with cloud logging. So what error reporting does is it will keep combing through your logs and try to look for errors in your logs database. And when it sees an error, it would automatically send you a notification. Let's say here I've configured a Slack channel. So you get an automatic notification. Next. When you click on that notification that you got in your Slack channel, you're now going into the error reporting page. What I love about this, it consolidates, gives you that single pane of glass for everything that you need to know with respect to one error. Right? So here you can see the description of the service, a clear description of the error, a histogram, and then it also tells you the root cause of where it found the trace and the logs. From here, you can go into logs too. Now, we recently integrated Duet AI, a generative AI capability into error reporting. So next time you don't know what to troubleshoot, where do I go from next? That's often the biggest problem in troubleshooting journey. You were like, hey, what can I do to troubleshoot? So it will give you three to five ways for you to go explore furthermore. Now, from error reporting, you can go into Logs Explorer by clicking on View Logs. Now, what this does is it gives you a starting point to go explore your log furthermore. You don't have to reduce noise. You don't have to figure out, filter, all that, right? So error reporting gives you a starting point to explore your log. 
and Evan just showed us all the amazing features that he uses in Logs Explorer to make troubleshooting easier. My idea of fun is combing through logs, says no one ever. Somebody going to disagree? Okay. I get paid to love logs for a living, and I don't do that myself. So we recently integrated Duet AI in Logs Explorer. So this has been a huge advantage. Like, if you go in and say, can you explain this log entry to me? In simple language, natural language terms, it will tell you what happened. This is amazing. I don't have to strain through combing through logs and try to understand and summarize myself. Versus Duet AI can do this for you. Okay, this part was deleted in this service at this time in this cluster. Isn't that everything that you need to know at that point? Right. So now, Logs Explorer can help you troubleshoot when your cardinality is not so high. Versus if your cardinality is high and you want to bring in more users into your ecosystem, then Log Analytics comes in play. Log analytics, okay. So to explain log analytics in very simple words, you send us your log data, unstructured, semi-structured, whatever format you have, and we in the back end will figure out how to store it in a SQL database. You don't have to create an ETL pipeline, you don't have to figure out how to store it. We will do it for you in the back end. And then, it's schema on read, so there is no pre-processing. Your team is not spending hours and hours trying to figure out how to build a database. You don't have to DIY. We will do it in the back end. And with schema on read, and it allows you to use SQL, right? SQL is, I guess, the third most popular language in the whole world, and generative AI can help you write SQL queries. So schema on read and SQL, and with instant charting and dashboarding capabilities, BigQuery lets you comb through petabytes of data in seconds, right? An excellent use case of this would be, say for example, you wanna find out DevOps trend. Help me understand my API performance by looking at the top count of requests grouped by response type and severity. It would take you three to five steps to do this in another two. With SQL, it's just one query and you're able to get to root cause this faster. Likewise, if you have SecOps, Help me find all the audit logs associated with a specific user over past month. When you generate your compliance report, this is just one query that you need to run and you have your answers instantly. With networking troubleshooting, help me troubleshoot network issues for GKE instance using VP VPC flows and firewall. Okay. SQL makes it easy. It brings in more users into the ecosystem. If, I, if you think from a long-term perspective, it saves you on costs, it makes it easy, it reduces the steep learning curve that you usually get with any observability solution. We also have something called Community Security Analytics. It's a GitHub repository. Let's say you wanna get answers to all these questions and you're already ingesting a ton of security, lab, security um, logs. You could go into SQL, just copy paste the SQL query from there and execute it. It makes life so much easier. Now, log analytics is the first step. I want to talk to you about what do we think is going to come next in apps and what are we building here in Google Cloud. Our vision is to bring in logs, metrics, traces, metadata in a managed data lake and enable you to break, create use cases such as log analytics, which is the step one that we just saw, and build more on it such as GCP utilization, FinOps, and much more. An example of how the data lake would look like, say for example, you could build a report like this, which pretty much combines a metrics from your cloud monitoring and your billing information from cloud billing and generates insights into cost and utilization. FinOps has been a problem for many, many years. This data lake and bringing all your signals into one ecosystem is going to make troubleshooting a lot more easier. That being said, you know, it's truly an exciting time to be in cloud and a furthermore exciting time to be in apps, right? With building a data lake and having generative AI on top of it, troubleshooting is gonna get a lot more easier and faster. So for the final wrap up, I'd like to invite Evan for the sta stage. So 
If we have to give you three suggestions, advice, or recommendations, I'd say number one is think about scale, right? Google was able to go from zero to a billion users on the same platform. Snap was able to go from zero to 400 million users on the same platform. And Ops was never a bottleneck. We never stopped the business growth. We enabled the business to grow faster. So when you're thinking about Ops decisions, think about, okay, will this stop us from scaling? The only time you shouldn't be thinking about scale is if you don't want your business to grow or you're going to deprecate your solution. I, and I hope that's not the case, right? Number two, remove fragmentation. If you're going to add a step in your ops journey, think about what would it take for me to do it 10 times more or 20 times more. If you feel like it's complex, then you're adding a fragmentation layer for your ops solution. So removing fragmentation will greatly, greatly help you with observability and troubleshooting. And lastly, partnership goes a long way. Like Google has been helping Snap, you know, help with their operation system for a very long time. And Snap has been helping Google develop a product life cycle for the ops solution. So with partnerships, we can go a very long way. That being said, thank you so much for being here today. And we truly appreciate if you can take a quick minute to give your feedback. And the learning does not have to end here. These are the other sessions where you can learn much more about observability solutions. If they're not live, it'll be recorded on YouTube. And I'll be staffing the booth at the Innovators Hive down. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take it there. Being said, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Truly appreciate it.